mm -hmm. made an announcement earlier today uh, that you will be retiring. What message do you want to give to the fans? Well, it was, it was a beautiful run, beautiful ride. Uh, played in some great cities, played for some great organizations, learned a lot throughout the course over my career, and uh, some great teammates. And what I'm trying to do, or what I try to do off the court and be the leader of uh, investing in the tech space and opening that door and bringing it to the players has been beautiful to watch and so we continue to go down that journey. I expanded on that a little Please. bit. Uh, what is next for you? Yeah, so I started my own uh, venture firm, mm -hmm. Mosaic um, General Partnership. $200 million early stage tech fund investing in uh, companies all the way from uh, health tech to sports media rights, um, you know, software, all throughout the tech ecosystem and just changing the way we're thinking about it and who's getting access and who's participating in some, on some of these cap tables. Well, major, major props to you for doing that. Is that one of the biggest reasons why we haven't seen you or we're not, we're not expecting to see you on the bench coaching? Because I've always thought about you coaching, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, well... It will be there, and I don't want to close that door, but this is an opportunity that I feel like I can pass up mm -hmm. um, in terms of having access that's never been had. You know, you, you had a lot of 49ers players in the past, historically, uh, who have done it. Ronnie Lott's done a great job um, in that space. But I feel like as an NBA player, um, the, the, what we have in terms of our visibility across the world, you know, we do business mm -hmm. all across, you know, the universe. And um, for me, it was opening that door, getting there early with the Warriors, mm -hmm. and then taking in that. And a big part of the foundation is giving it back to the players. How, recept how receptive have some of the players been? I mean, you've played with some of the all-time greats, as far as I'm concerned, the greatest shooting backcourt in the history of basketball, the greatest shooter that God ever created, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> is Steph Curry, Draymond, and the crew. Um, how receptive have your former teammates and your NBA brethren been with all of this? Oh, it's been beautiful. I mean, you've seen, you know, Carmelo Anthony's done a hell of a job in this yes, space. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Durant has done a hell of a job in the space. Uh, obviously, you know, guys like LeBron, you know, he's maximized what a player of his, you know, of his stature can do, you know, but other players, you know, uh, on the, I shouldn't say on the lower end, but not as visible, they're getting access, they're being able to get on cap tables. Uh, Steph and, and Clay, myself, we just uh, bought the TGL team, Indoor Golf League with Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy. Mm -hmm. That news dropped yesterday, super excited about that. So. Players have been talking a lot about ownership, you know, not just in the sports world, but through every business ecosystem that we're involved in, and then you're starting to see it in all sports. Mm. Okay. All, all right, right. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about your former team. The Warriors made some changes this offseason, some huge changes. They have CP3 now. Do you think that they have enough to get it done and win another championship? Yeah, well, I mean, when you, when you got Steph Curry in your team, you always have a chance, and you can, you can never count them out. I think it's him and LeBron. Mm -hmm. You can't count them out until it's over. And I think CP is going to be in addition to that team. You know, Steve Kerr spoke to it already in terms of the leadership he's brought to the team. Um, turnovers have been a problem for the Warriors historically. And CP is one of those guys who can settle them down. I'm super excited about him and what he's going to be able to bring out of Jonathan Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga has probably had one of the better preseasons in the entire NBA. Um, you know, Wiggins is Wiggins. You know, uh, Clay. you know, going into a contract year. You know, with the Warriors, there's always been something that's brewing and will it get in their way? Mm -hmm. this, this hasn't gotten their way thus far, and I won't. I think that won't be the case. With I ain't going to get on it too much, but that damn Kaminga and Moody, they got to step up now. I mean, it's time. No, they ready. They, they've been around. They've been around now. They ain't rookies no more. It's, it's, it's time. We, because I, I, I don't need to see Steph running to the ground. A brother 35 years old. I don't need to see him running to the ground. Clay Thompson, real quickly. Contract negotiations, they're part. Um, this is one of the greatest shooters in NBA history. Mm -hmm. Four-time champion. His resume speaks for itself. Um, we might not have liked it how he responded to Devin Booker giving it to him. He's gonna have to. He's gonna have to handle that this season. But your thoughts as to Klay Thompson and what the future should be for him in Golden State or somewhere else? Your thoughts? Well, we haven't seen. We've only seen, but so many organizations have this type of success. In NBA history, you know, you got the Lakers, Celtics, uh, Spurs, uh, the, the Bulls. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of like a decade-long stretch, you don't, you don't see it too often. And I think all parties understand the importance of that legacy. And I think those guys have to finish their careers together. Mm. 
Let me move on uh, asking you because obviously when we think about the Warriors, the reality is, is that when you think about the top teams in the West, meaning like the top three teams per se, that's not the no, those are not the names that come to mind. It's the Phoenix Suns with Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal now along with Booker. It's the obviously reigned and defending NBA champion Denver Nuggets. And then people look at, dare I say, the Lakers because they were in the conference finals last year and AD and LeBron James is still there. Your thoughts about the Golden State Warriors and how they fit in the upper echelon of the Western Conference. Well, like I said, as long as you got Steph Curry in your team, you got a chance. You know, I feel like he went in there and stole a championship in the 22, you mm -hmm. know, and every other team that's won an NBA championship outside of the Warriors have had some size down low. Like, they've been big teams. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lakers, you know, or any team that LeBron's been on. Mm -hmm. You know, either it was Kevin Love or, um, you know, Anthony Davis with the Lakers. Yes. Jokic. Mm -hmm. Giannis. Mm -hmm. It's always been size. Mm -hmm. And so, Steph has been an outlier. And it continue and until we someone figures out how to stop him or keep him from getting there, he's always, he's always got a chance. You don't find yourself concerned about size when you look at Golden State in terms of Draymond Green, in terms of Kevon Looney being down low? Don't you, need, don't you think you need additional size down there? I know you got Sarek there now, but don't you think you need additional size there? I think size, is a, size in the NBA has become the NFL running back, and mm -hmm. you don't realize you need it mm -hmm. until you need it. Yeah. And so I think size is important. Uh, Kevon Looney doesn't get enough credit. He's good. 20 re he's getting 20 rebounds, mm -hmm. you know, every other week, it seems like. And, right. you know, but we all ask him what's his vertical. Right. You know, and so uh, Draymond is Draymond. He's a historical player, you know, in terms of what he brings to a team. We've never seen something like that, a guy undersized and have that much impact on both ends of the floor, despite everyone always trying to highlight his deficiencies. Mm -hmm. He just keeps figuring out he's a winner. How much better do you believe things are going to be this year from an environmental perspective? compared to what it was last year because of how that incident mm -hmm. really compromised the team to some degree? Well, I think it's better for all parties. You know, I'm looking for Jordan Poole to be one of the top scorers in the league, not just the East. You know, we saw what he did in three quarters yeah. the other right. night in New York. And damn Knicks. And yeah. He started. Yeah. The damn <laughs> and, 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 you know, all-star year or possibilities for Jordan Poole if they can get the wins to match up with the statistics. Now, as I spoke about with the Warriors before, Chris Paul, Chris Paul is that guy who's – always reached the maximum potential of all the teams that he's been on. And how often can you say that for any player in league mm -hmm. history? It's only but a handful. Let me transition to a different subject, more of a macro subject, because when we talk about player participation, that's been a subject that's been tackled this offseason because of the, what the rule, what the league has implemented. Kawhi Leonard spoke out about it. He didn't feel like he was somebody that should be targeted. Fair to him because uh, injuries are injuries. The flip side to it, however, is that I'm talking to a guy right here and Andre Iguodala. You, sir, the first five, your, your five of your first six years, you played all 82 games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is not something we see in today's day and age. Talk to us about why you believe that is the case and talk to us about how you feel about the league and their movement towards trying to implore players to play more and take the regular season, 82-game regular season, a bit more seriously. Well, I mean, where I grew up in Illinois. So I saw Michael Jordan, you know, saw Scottie Pippen. Those guys were playing 80, 81, 82 games every single season. And anytime you spoke to Michael Jordan, it was about no matter where I was at, I wanted the world to know I was the best player in the history of the game. And you look at the last dance, and you look at they went to France yep. in the preseason. And MJ's out there playing as if it's a championship game. So I think it's just that competitive nature. You know, I played down in Miami. Mm -hmm. I played in Heat culture. Mm -hmm. You step on that floor, you know, you're trying to show the people who right. you are. It's 450 basketball but, players, and you want to prove that we're the best league in the world, and every single night you're going to get the best product. But do you believe that the league was right in taking this position? Um, and, and how do you feel about players who are not playing? I will say this. Let me, let me throw in this caveat. I want to make sure I highlight it. It ain't always the players. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got strength and conditioning right. coaches collaborating with the analytics department, and they're coming to the players and saying, we're well, going to sit you down now. We're going to implore you not to play. That's not the way it used to be, but that's the way it is. And many players have said to me, look, man, it ain't all our fault. Stop, you know, the, the, make sure you point right. out it's them too. I want to know where you stand on all of that. Well, there, there, that is something that happens where I've seen a player say, I'm playing tonight. And the training staff saying, I think you should sit or we're sitting you. Or you have a plan out even before the season starts. You're going to sit out this night, this night, this night. And so I think that gets thrown out in terms of 
the perception mm -hmm. of who's at fault. We know how politics go. You know, we know how it goes in a negotiation, you know, in CBA negotiation, who's at fault. And so that can be a ploy or a tactic that's thrown on the player. I think that that can be unfair. At the same time, it's a partnership and both sides have to understand we want to put out the best product. We're going into, you know, negotiations on a new TV deal and how that's going to be bundled and split up. And so when you're looking at it like that, you know, we got a certain amount of national televised games. You want to make sure your best players and your best products out there, but at the same time, as a collective with the league and the players, we want to have the best product night in, night out, regardless of who's playing. Just as a reminder, yeah. Olympic gold medalist 2012. Of course. NBA Finals MVP mm -hmm. 2015, four-time NBA champion. That's yeah, what I'm talking sure, to asking these sure. questions to. I just feel like he's good to throw out your resume. <laughs> I'm sure the white would appreciate that. White would appreciate that. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the basketball court a little bit and go to the Eastern Conference. The Bucks mm -hmm. and the Celtics, both teams look very different. Which team do you trust to go to the NBA Finals this year? Drew Holiday might be one of the most underrated players. He is the most underrated mm -hmm. player of – this generation, mm -hmm. you know, for him to not make all defensive team every single year, every year he's been in the league. I spent some time with him in Philly. I saw that at a young age. Yeah. This guy's different. He's a similar. Every team he's been on maximized their potential, regardless if they were making a run in the championship mm -hmm. or if they, you know, down in New Orleans, they always were competing and they can always upset. So I'm a huge Drew Holiday fan. Mm -hmm. I know what he brings to the table. He's a great balance for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like Porzingis is in a really good situation for himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm going with the Celtics until they prove me wrong. Milwaukee Bucks, very, very, very talented team. They got to figure out, no, I shouldn't say they have to, but they mm -hmm. will have to figure out mm -hmm. how they'll delegate, mm -hmm. you know, the responsibilities with mm -hmm. who's handling the ball the mm -hmm. most. Right. Giannis is so used to being ball dominant. He'll get over it. Dame is this Dame it's time. It's Dame. It's Dame time. <laughs> Hell with it. John is to get over it. We all know he ain't shooting no perimeter shots. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to be doing that when, it, when it's time. Get the ball a day, okay, to close. Let him do everything for three quarters and, and, and 11 minutes and make sure that last minute go to days. Really interesting, though, defensively, Yeah. how will Milwaukee adjust? I don't think that's given enough, right. you know, spotlight in terms of a possible deficiency mm -hmm. where Drew right. Holiday can guard. You know, mm -hmm. he, he, when we played against him, mm -hmm. When I was with the Warriors, mm -hmm. he guarded Draymond, he guarded KD, mm -hmm. he guarded Steph, yeah. he guarded Clay. Mm -hmm. yeah. How will Fantastic. Milwaukee be able to adjust yeah. with some of the defensive line or yeah. some of the defensive schemes they'll implement with that team? A team nobody's talking about or not talking about enough that you believe can make some noise and disrupt the power structure in each respective conference. Mm -hmm. Who's that in the, S, in the West? Who's that in the East? In the West, I'm going to go with the Sacramento Kings. Yeah. Save I a, agree with that. Save a 50-point game seven Are they really a sleeper, though, then? That's right. Well, After last season? They're always going to be a sleeper because, you know, those smaller market teams mm -hmm. always yeah, get true. the short end of the stick yeah. in terms of, you know, national presence, right. you know, how often they're being written about. But what Mike Brown has been able to do with that mm -hmm. team, you know, uh, well, what he's been able to do with Sabonis, you know, uh, swipe yeah, a fox. fox. Swipe yeah. a fox. Yeah. The real deal. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a name that can be a, a sleeper pick. Should have been a pick. Laker. It should be. It might be a sleeper pick for 2024 yeah. in Paris. Okay, uh, I, I'm I'm a huge fan of him. Two way player, He's a offense, star. defense. He's a star. Making shots. You know, you saw some of the game winners yeah. he was making last year. The one he had in Orlando. Yeah. He pulled up like from Steph Range. Was yeah. mad hard. Was crazy. Scared of nothing. Over to the East. Yep. Uh, you got it. Everyone's talking about Milwaukee and Boston. Mm -hmm. um, I got to give some love to your Knicks. No, oh, okay. They don't have enough star power. I know. It, but. They change the culture of the Knicks, and okay. and and they're going to be able to get. Uh, I feel like a well, superstar. Touch my heart right now. Sometime in the future. <laughs> touch my heart right now, but let me tell you something about these Knicks. Since you brought them up, I wasn't going to bring them up because I, that, that's that's my sleeper. You know what I'm saying? It's really really nice that the culture has changed. It's really really nice that Brunson is that dude. That and somebody's got to let Julius Randle know you really a third option, not a number one option, but the brother can play. Damn it, they stockpiling picks. You got to use them at some point. You can't just be stockpiling mm. picks, okay? You got to trade some. You got like 11 picks in the next seven years. Trade some of them and get a star. Go after Donovan Mitchell again. Well, that's what Go after you. Donovan Mitchell again. That's what you get the picks for. That's right. So you can package it. That's right. But I think you got to be very strategic about who you bring in here. I think you want somebody with a history, a history of being able to make a run. You know, like, 
The All NBA, right. the, the NBA is a fine line between that top ten guys and everybody else. You got to take chances though. I mean, you the Knicks beggars can't be choosing. You ain't had a damn star. Okay, Melo was a star, but he wasn't LeBron James. Patrick Ewan was a star, but he wasn't a large one. And Bernard King had bad knees. Okay, and that's what David I'm saying. There's limitations. You got you, you can get Giannis. Who knows? You, can, you might be able to get Giannis. I got I got to think about this. I got to think okay. about this. Who's the star that will come to New York? And, and can, can somebody convince Dolan to move to Vegas with that sphere that he built and all of that? <laughs> Let him just stay there. Let him just stay there and don't even come to New York for the games. That'll be a better. That'll improve the chance. And beads. And B. And B or Giannis. There we go. Or Giannis. And B. But I yeah. still love me some Donovan Mitchell, but not over those two.